Hey guys, Culture here. It's that time of the month again where I get frustrated about what is seemingly a minor issue, but in my mind speaks to a much larger issue. Like when Crash leaves the lid off the peanut butter jar, and I somehow use it as an example of why humans are killing the planet. Oh, and to clarify, I said that time of the month, not my time of the month, which means something completely different. Well, actually not that different. I mean, they both involve getting irrationally angry at the slightest irritation. Oh boy, I'm digging myself into a hole here. So you know, if I made a comment like that to a group of close friends, then they probably wouldn't be an issue since they would know I'm kidding and shrug it off. But when a person puts themselves out there on the internet, the space for misinterpretation becomes much larger. As such, there's a higher expectation of people in the public eye to promote good values, or to walk the line. The argument usually goes something like this. Kids are impressionable and mimic or emulate the behaviours of those around them. In the same way, they might try to copy or parrot the actions or words of people they see on TV, in movies, or on the internet. Now, I'm not a developmental psychologist, I'm not even well read on the topic, so I'm going to give this argument the benefit of the doubt and agree that this is true. That is to say that kids attempt to take on the values of people they watch and treat them like role models. A role model is a person to be looked up to by others as an example to be imitated. Or at least that's the definition I got after a two second search on Google. Some people actively seek out role models as people who have already achieved success in their field of interest. An aspiring basketballer might look up to Michael Jordan. A young scientist might look up to Albert Einstein. An enthusiastic politician might look up to Joseph Stalin. Oh, what, my jokes aren't current enough for you? Fine, they look up to Donald Trump. Is that pandering enough? Yeesh. In any case, the point is that they've chosen a person whose life path follows the path that they also want to take. But let's take Michael Jordan as an example. Some kid decides he wants to use Michael Jordan as a role model and begins to do everything he does. He dresses like him, he talks like him, he practices for as many hours a day as him. He gets a role in a weird Looney Tunes crossover basketball movie. Well, okay, maybe not that far. Now in this case, Michael Jordan is a pretty good role model. He's healthy, successful, law-abiding, and tall. Well, tall isn't something you can really aspire to, but still, he's a good guy. So if your kid picked Michael Jordan, then awesome. Sit them down in front of some NBA clips and pour yourself a glass of wine. Parenting job complete. Well, actually maybe don't drink in front of your kids, but we'll come back to that. Now let's say your kid wants to be a singer. It's 2010 and a new Canadian singer has burst out of YouTube and into the music industry with his hit song, Baby. He gets to sing with Ludacris and he's hugely successful and all the girls love him who wouldn't want to look up to him. You become invested in his life, obsessively following him on social media, listening to his songs. Your parents are cool with it because, hey, he's just a kid who can sing well, right? And so the obsession grows to the point at which you'd do anything this guy said because he has to be right. Now, in case you haven't figured out who I'm talking about yet, go Google Justin Bieber. Hell, just Google pop music and he's the first artist that pops up. In fact, you should be so ashamed of yourself that if you don't know, just Google, why am I dumb? Now, off the back of his success, it's well known that Bieber descended into a bit of, shall we say, bad behavior. Assault, vandalism, a DUI while drag racing, hoping Anne Frank would have been a Belieber, coming up with the name Belieber, the list goes on. Now, suddenly you're invested in someone who most people in society would call a bad person. Now, let's not dig too far into whether Justin Bieber is a good role model, but my point is that most parents, and most people for that matter, would say probably not. <laughs> but it's too late now. You follow this kid's life so closely that you want to imitate him to the very end. So what's my point here? That Justin Bieber is a douchebag. No, 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 no. I'm just kidding. My point is that picking a role model should be, at first, a careful choice, and once chosen, should not be too strictly adhered to. Instead, take parts of someone's life and follow those examples. In the case of Justin Bieber, follow his work ethic, follow his creativity, sure, but don't assume that those two things are a direct result of him, for example, peeing in a mop bucket in a nightclub kitchen. Unless his song Sorry is him apologizing to the club's janitor, the two things probably aren't related. But come on, that was an easy example. In that case, the person specifically made an active decision that he wanted to emulate Bieber. But what about times when we subconsciously are affected by the actions of people we see? The most common take on this is YouTubers. That's right, guys like me and Crash. Now of course, Crash isn't a good role model, and hey, even I'm not a great role model necessarily, but we're not trying to be good role models. We're trying to entertain and be informative. So the question becomes, do we have an obligation to behave in a way deemed socially acceptable whilst generating content? 
Michael Jordan and Justin Bieber are in the same boat. When they decided to play basketball or to sing pop songs, they didn't choose to become a role model to younger people. But they became role models whether they liked it or not, and this is an integral aspect of being famous. Fame is a whole other issue that I'll have to cover another time, but let's accept for now that as soon as you make yourself the focal point of other people's attention, you should expect that they might copy you or your ideas. Mockery is the highest form of flattery, after all. Ugh, what a dumb saying. Now, I accept this, albeit reluctantly. I accept that it's a part of being human. Especially as children, we learn from those around us, and it's hardwired into our essence to reflect and bounce off of the people around us. We are, as I've said a million times at this point, social animals. So I'm not going to say we should stop expecting famous people to act like role models, because I think that there is some responsibility as a decent member of society to put forward good values, at least in public. Now, if paparazzi take candid photos of celebrities in the privacy of their own home, or a hacker leaks private pictures, then that's crossing a line, and people can't be expected to modulate their private lives just because at any moment someone might be watching. What people do in their own homes is their business, and no one else's as far as I'm concerned. But at least in public, there's an image that all people, not just celebrities, put forward. And whilst it may seem dishonest at first, I see it as a way to peacefully coexist with people who have different views. Some people aren't comfortable with swearing, and as such I personally make an effort not to swear in public. Talking to my friends, however, well, that's another case entirely. I've got enough topic, but the point is that we should all share some responsibility and take ownership of what we say and do in public. But just as importantly, if not more importantly, we should take responsibility for the content we expose ourselves and our children to. If you're one of those people who spams TV networks with emails or social media posts complaining about how one of the shows they present is inappropriate, then I'm just going to come out and say it. Get over yourself. It's not like the network is shoving the show in your face, forcing you to watch it. There are a million ways you can avoid content that you don't want yourself or your children to watch. Rating systems to inform you, blocking systems on the internet and TV. But even then, it astounds me when, unprompted, people complain that they don't like a show or a particular internet or TV personality. Okay, cool, just don't watch it then. To watch a show, you have to actively turn on your computer or TV, click through multiple pages or change the channel, and then once viewing the content decide not to keep changing the channel or find another video. How dumb are you that you can't stop watching a show that you don't like? And don't tell me it's because you're worried about other people watching it and corrupting their minds, because we all know that one, it's none of your business, and two, if other people are watching, then chances are you're in the wrong and it is okay to watch. <sighs> Sorry to get angry about this, but it's just, I wish people could take responsibility for themselves. A role model is not a scapegoat for issues with yourself or your children. You should be the one setting the example, you should be the one teaching your kids good morals, and you should be the one that your child turns to when they need to know how to handle a situation. Unless you're a bigot, in which case maybe just let them watch the TV. There's this idea of monkey see, monkey do, whereby kids learn habits from their parents, especially when it comes to drinking and drugs. Ever seen that PSA from the 80s? Who taught you how to do this stuff? You, all right? I learned it by watching you. Well, there's some truth to it, even if it is super cheesy. Maybe drinking in front of your kids will make them more likely to drink when they grow up, but get ready for what may seem like a complete 180. Who cares? I'm not saying that it's good or bad or whatever, but it's just the way it is. It's about the values that the parent chooses to instill in their kid. As long as there is personal responsibility for that, then I think that that's all someone can hope for. So I've spoken about the responsibilities of the role model and of parents, but I feel that there's one person I'm forgetting. Oh yeah, the fan themselves. As a fan myself of many, many shows and people, I feel that above all it's my responsibility to decide which opinions I take in and which I put aside. If I love a movie but it turns out that the director or lead actor or whoever cheated on their wife or committed a crime, etc., then I approach it in two ways. Firstly, I accept that the action isn't appropriate. An obvious step but it needed to be said. Secondly, I dissociate the actions of the creator from their work. The movie, or song, or whatever it is, doesn't become bad because of the actions of its creator. The art and the artist should never be too intimately entangled. Of course, some people would think that their actions were so egregious, so harmful, that they should be punished by condemning their work as well. But here's my view. People aren't all good or all bad. No one is one way or the other entirely. People may be selfish, they may be ignorant, or they may be violent, but these qualities might come from a well-motivated place. They might be selfish because they're protective of their family. They might be ignorant because they were brought up in a closed-off society with vastly sheltered views and that they haven't had time to open up yet. 
I'm not saying that any of these things are excuses for bad behavior, but they're explanations. My point is that it's okay to dislike some aspects of a person's personality, but like other parts. I might like Steve Harvey because he's funny to me, but dislike that he's misogynistic. That's just the first example that popped into my head, and it's not a great one, but I'm saying that my own values are gained from filtering and rationalizing the views of my friends, family, and yes, even celebrities or online personalities. And that's all of our responsibilities as a fan, to weigh the opinions of others and make our own decisions on what we choose to believe, rather than to blindly follow someone. To accept that all people make mistakes, whether they're people we know personally or publicly. To see a role model as a template, rather than as a recipe. These rants are just one example of many cases on the internet where someone, in this case myself, puts forth their ideas. Don't take what I say at face value. Think about it and try to combat it in an intelligent, rational way. If you can't combat it, then understand why you agree, instead of simply repeating the views without any arguments to back them up. Do this with everything you hear online, in the news, from people in your real life. Do this with your role models and find aspects to admire, but also aspects to improve upon. Role models can be a great thing if utilized properly. Rant over. I'd love to know if you guys agree or not, and whether there's any people you look to for advice or model yourself after. So as always, vent in the comments section below. Follow Culture Crush on social media!